All right, good morning, everyone. It's been a while since I've personally been able to attend these calls, and I'm so bummed because I know you guys have been getting a wealth, a wealth of knowledge shared with you from all of the amazing founders uh, so far. Um, <laughs> my name is Eliza Yoshida, and um, I am super ecstatic and grateful and honored to be here with all of you today. I am a Blue Diamond and US Founder 2.0, and um, I'm super nervous. <laughs> so let's go ahead. Go ahead and in the comments, drop where you're from, um, your name, where, where you're from, and um, also share with us Founders 2.0 points just got updated today. So as you know, on your founder's journey, you should know exactly where you are at all times, where those points are coming from and have your plans. So please let us know as of today. And if you didn't go check yet, go check now for what your updated points are and please uh, share those with us. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, before I do, a couple of disclaimers. One, pretty PowerPoints. I don't use Canva, not my thing. So you guys are getting a super basic Google PowerPoint presentation from me. Um, I'm brutally honest to a fault. I'm an open book. You can pretty much ask me anything, but just prepare that I'm always going to be honest, good, bad, or otherwise. Um, nothing today that nothing that I'm sharing today are my original thoughts or ideas, um, but just what I've learned in my almost nine year journey with doTERRA. The last disclaimer is that my husband is a police officer, super short staffed, and has been working crazy doubles. He is in a bedroom sleeping right now, not knowing that I'm on this call. I left him a sticky note saying, don't come out of the room unless you're like appropriately dressed. But in Hawaii, we don't wear a lot of t-shirts. So if he comes out and he's shirtless, I have warned you, okay? These are things at this point in my life that are outside of my control. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so thank you for forgiving me for all of those things first thing in the morning. All right. Whew. Okay, let me go ahead. I am so nervous. I took my adaptive. I've got balance all over. So here we go. I already did that. Today, however, my topic is going to be the daily method of operation. And I'll tell you guys right now that this was something I heard very, very early on in my doTERRA journey. Again, it is not an original thought by any means. If you go ahead and Google it, you will find a plethora of information around this idea in our industry and in our network marketing direct sales industry. So I highly encourage you to dig deeper with this concept uh, beyond the very, very basics of what I'm going to share today. Also, I am not keeping up with the chat at all because that's going to be really hard for me. So I'll try to make stops in between to come back and check out what you guys are sh sharing. Okay, so these, thank you to Leo Nani who allowed me to screenshot these slides. Just a, some friendly reminders about the purpose of Founders Friday. Um, our goal is not to get a lot of people on these calls. In fact, my room can't hold more than 100. So hopefully that doesn't become an issue. Our main goal um, is really to work as one unit to inspire and equip those of you that are committed to becoming a Founder 2.0 to just share a little bit about our journeys, our stories, and um, what we feel led us to being where we're at. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out. She's not on this call. She's on an amazing trip with her family right now to, uh, to Dr. Tina Wong, who really was the... Um, the brainchild behind this and spearheaded all of this for all of you. So if you ever see Dr. Tina um, at any event and you're on these calls, be sure to thank her. So you are here, so you know when they are. Um, I will just let you know that next week, uh, Miley Ma'i'i, she is a presidential diamond um, leader also here in Hawaii. Uh, she will be... Um, leading the call next week. So I think she's on this call. She can drop in the chat what her homework is for next week and the call details, and then stay tuned for that information to come out to you um, later. So hopefully um, I covered all the logistics. I'm gonna do about 30 minutes of presentation. I'm going to share my story and then we'll have some Q&A time and, um, and that'll be it. 
All right, so what we really want um, to expect from you since we are showing up for you guys here, we're asking that as much as possible you attend with your cameras on. If you have sleeping husbands that might come out half dressed, then maybe we'll forgive you, but otherwise we would love to have your cameras on and see your faces. We did ask that you completed some prerequisite tasks and weekly homework. Um, and so I hope that all of you uh, completed what I had asked. I am a teacher of 19 years in the public school. I still continue to teach because I love it, not because I have to. Um, so I work part-time for my daughter's elementary school as a math coach. So I am going to be calling on some people to share about the homework assignments. And if you did not get those for whatever reason, please take a quick screenshot of this or with your phone. And if you did not show up to this call prepared with the prerequisites for today, I am going to ask that after this call is over, that you go ahead and make sure that you follow through with that. Um, this homework these prerequisites, they are for you and for your business. And so if you're really showing up committed and capable to this Founders 2.0 journey, you are going to take all of the tasks and the homework that other founders um, share with you to complete um, really to heart. And you're going to do them because they are going to be what helps you to grow your business. So I asked you to use the doTERRA memory jogger. Um, just Google it, uh, honestly, if you Google it, it'll come right up. Um, then using your business builder's guide, create a new names list on pages 15 to 16. That memory jogger can really help you to fill in that names list. And then I wanted everyone to choose one day between when the homework was assigned and today to take the following actions and record the amount of time you spent engaging in these activities just for one day. Um, if you did it every day, that's a bonus to you, but making two new contacts, whether in person or online, making two invitations to people to learn more, following up with two prospects and um, having one business conversation. This is the topic of my call today. So I'm going to go ahead and delve into that more deeply, but these were the prerequisites. If you did your homework, can you drop in the comments like, I did my homework, yay. All right, okay, before I get started, I'm gonna keep going. Oh, I am seeing a lot of people not dropping in their points, where they're from. So please be sure to do that. Oh, yay, Melanie, you have a police officer hubby, Emily, so you guys understand. Paula, awesome. Okay. All right. Great job, everyone, for doing your homework that you did and showing up today. All right. So I think it's really important that um, you hear part of our stories because here's the thing. A lot of you are like seeing the glory, right? You're seeing all of these people found up as uh, pop founders. I don't know if she's on the call, but congratulations to Roxanne Weaver. She just hit um, a founder 2.0 position. So we're super, super excited to welcome her to the, to the crew. But here's the thing, you're seeing all of the glory, but there are stories, powerful, hard, <laughs> incredible, amazing stories that we each have in our own unique journeys here. And you are all writing your stories and you all have everything you need to make Founder 2.0 part of your story, okay? But it's whether or not you're going to do what it takes whether or not you're going to be brave, whether or not you're going to, you know, break through all of those limiting beliefs. So I just want to put it out there. And I say this a lot. And sometimes people tell me that I shouldn't say things like this because um, I'm not trying to be self-deprecating. It's what I really believe. There is nothing special about me. Like I don't have any incredible special skills that anybody else doesn't have, doesn't have access to, or can't develop. But what I do have in this journey, and I'll share that a little bit more, is what I think got me here is consistency uh, in my business. So I want to share a little bit about my story and the valuable lessons that they've taught me along the way in this business that hopefully you can glean a little bit of insight and inspiration from and not make the same mistakes, perhaps. Okay. So first of all, I was a huge essential oil skeptic huge. Like people would talk to me about the oils. My palms would get sweaty. I would break eye contact in 
my soul. I was like, please stop talking to me about your hippy dippy voodoo witchy. Like, I don't want anything to do with it. But a time came in my life where I needed the oils. I wanted the oils. And I just want you guys all to remember that a no now doesn't mean a no forever. Of my enrollments this month, of my four enrollments this month, three of them are with MetaPower. And these are people uh, like lifelong friends that I've been inviting to learn about oils forever. And they've been a pretty much a hard no. Like they'll buy a BOGO from me here and there. Now three of them, because of MetaPower, uh, have finally said yes. So we're talking five, six years I've been inviting and following up with these people. So a no now doesn't mean a no forever. And I also say that you would want me on your team. So you never know who these no's are. They might say yes to the product at one point, but if they say yes to the business, um, that would be even more incredible for all of us. I was a full-time working mom with zero time when I started this business. Um, I was a classroom teacher. I literally had no time. My husband worked shift work as a police officer. My kids were young, three and one. I had zero time. What I did was I made time. I created time because we all do have time to give to things. It's just what we give up um, otherwise. And so I just want to say that I hear this a lot, that I don't have time to do this. You do have time, but you're going to have to sacrifice other things for, for your goals. And if founders is your goal, you're going to have to probably sacrifice more than you would normally because it asks you to move um, at a much faster pace. So I worked full time. I achieved a rank every single year. So I built very slow, very steady. Um, and um, and then once I hit the rank of diamond, then I was able to go half time and free up my time. And it's amazing. Um, one thing that my enroller did was they bought my first convention ticket. And this was brilliant and something that I utilize still to today because Prior to going to convention, I had been sharing for a year and I loved it, but I was super casual. I didn't understand the business and I was just having fun. I love the products and I was just having fun, but convention changed everything for me. And I want to remind you that corporate events are magic as we are, you know, in a time of post convention tours and coming up on leadership and every opportunity that you have to connect yourself or your customers or your builders with corporate events, they are magic. If I had never attended that first convention, I don't think I would be sitting here today. So that is really, really something um, that I try to do. I buy my um, any new leader, their first ticket to convention, not their plane ticket, because that's too expensive from Hawaii, but just their like admission ticket and their first leadership ticket. Um, to really encourage them and to show my belief in them um, and the company. Um, once I went to this convention, I came back from this convention and I realized my eyes were open to the potential and the possibility around the business. And so I set myself um, my sight on my goals to silver and 1500. And if you guys know me, the two, I mean, I guess I'm couple passionate about a couple of things in this business but one thing I'm super passionate about is the 1500 power of three bonus and so as you are on this founder's journey you need to close off those rings get those points around helping strategize to get your leaders their $250 bonus so that means that you are setting yourself up to get this $1500 bonus and that bonus is what really solidified my belief in this business and really propelled me to see the potential of not only um you know subsidizing my income but you guys replacing my income. After five years, I made more money with doTERRA than I would have after 30 years of teaching with the Department of Education with a master's degree. Now, if that doesn't make you sad, I don't know what else does because teachers are highly worth more than we're paid. But this bonus is what really solidified my belief in the business. I kind of mentioned this earlier, but my journey is a little different from some of the others that you've heard. I think right now in our founders group, we have kind of a balance of like brand new builders to the business who started and launched because of the founders opportunity and built and achieved this goal. And then there's some of us who really, we just, um, for me, myself, and I think it's my next bullet, Founders was just the right time at the right place for me. Um, I was in a point in my business where I had been diamond. 
I was going for Blue Diamond. I signed up for Diamond Club for the first time, which I highly recommend. And I built slow and steady a rank a year. Um, just so you guys know, though, about that painful parts of our stories, I have lost three blue diamond qualifiers. So right now I sit at a solid organic diamond rank. I am super, super grateful for that. It is sustainable. The residual income is the goal and that is there for sure. But um, that is not an easy journey in this business and it never is. And so I just want to always be honest with people that right now my goal is to now find another person to help um, to help support and to go on this journey with, uh, with me as I work towards maintaining uh, Blue Diamond. But I am really proud of my story because I have never focused on what other people are doing and how fast or slow they're going, but I've really tried to stay focused on my journey. The thing is, though, is that Founders asks you to go at a lot faster pace than normal, and so that's something that you guys really have to take into account, and not something that I really have a lot to offer in that area. But again, Founders was the right time and the right place. So why am I here? Why am I a blue diamond? Um, why am I a founder 2.0? Because there's one thing, one thing that I have done almost every single day in my business, no matter if I'm traveling or what's happening in my life. I am consistent AF. Rarely a day goes by that I am not doing income producing actions for my business. And this is where today's topic of the daily method of operation comes in. This is what I have done to ensure that I am here and that I really do have that freedom around time and finances that I've always wanted and that this business, that this business can be for all of us. I want to remind you guys, and I know a lot of founders have talked about this already, but founders is a bonus for me anyway. It's the gravy. It's an extra cherry on top, but the business that is the real deal. That is the meat and potatoes. That is the long-term residual income that you want to strive for. And I, so, you know, I struggle sometimes with founders because while it's a great opportunity, never forget that everything you're doing for founders is really to build a long-term sustainable business, which is what you want. That ability at some point in your life, if you need to, to step back or step away and still have those pipes flowing and that income coming in. Um, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but one thing that I think has helped me, and we're all guilty. I am super guilty of imposter syndrome. There are a lot of times when I think, what do I have to share with people? What do they have to learn from me? But one thing that I've really tried to work on in this business and on this journey is to avoid entree envy. Avoid that doTERRA envy. I am so that person. I am the person that always orders the sampler powder at all the restaurants because then that way it ensures I have five or six different options and I'm not looking at everybody else's plate regretting that I didn't order what they have. So try to avoid that in your business. Stay focused on your journey, on your story. Be the leader. Be super grounded and super connected to the leader that you want to be and the leader that you would want to follow. I hear a lot of times in this business, I don't have leadership. I don't have support. You don't need anyone else to do this business. I have never really had, um, I don't really have like an up. I do have someone up, up, up that I talk to that supports me, but I've never had anyone that has helped me build this business. I've never had anyone placed on my team. You be the leader that you want to be and that you want to follow. Build the community and business that you want. All right. So let's get into it. What is this daily method of operation? Recently, I um, attended and presented at a base camp training here in Hawaii, and Emily Wright did a short five-minute video for all of these leaders. There was probably about 50 of them, and she talked about the art of self-discipline, and I just appreciated I mean, let's be real, I appreciate every message that comes from Emily, but I really, really appreciated um, 
her bringing this up because this is really where we're at, where we're inundated with life. Life is happening. It's not going to stop. And it's really heavy and really hard right now in so many different ways for so many people, personally, in business, in just it's life right? And so what the daily method of operation can do can give you a framework for you to really lean in and hone in your art of self-discipline. Because what's really tricky about that is no one else can do it for you, right? No one else can can teach you to be self-disciplined. Every single day, you have to take action. You have to have a plan. You have to know where you're going to, uh, uh, what you are going to accomplish or what you're wanting to accomplish. And then you have to execute. So the daily method of operation is just this framework of doing specific income producing action, specific daily action in your business. I have always used the two by two by two by two. Now, it says two by two by two by one on my slide, and I'll tell you why in a second. But for me, This has been what I've used. Now, there are tons of variations out there, and I highly recommend you go Google this topic and go look at what else is out there. I love Simon Chan. Um, Oh, my gosh. What's his podcast? Somebody put it. um, Simon Chan's podcast. Multi. Oh, my goodness. Put it in the chat if you can help me out with that. But he talks a lot about the daily method of operation. I listen to his podcast a lot. Um, But you can really create your own adventure. What this means is that in those early days when I had zero time, this is what I made it a priority to do almost every single day. I made two new contacts in person or online. We have moved a lot, especially because of the pandemic into more of an online space. Making a new contact does not mean that you talk to them about doTERRA. It literally means making a new contact and connecting with someone new. That's what it means. It's not vomiting doTERRA all over them or meta power now. It's just genuinely connecting with somebody. And at some point, it will make sense for you to invite them to learn more. Two invitations to a class presentation. So I've made these new contacts. I have these new contacts. And now I'm going to invite people to a class to a presentation. In this case right now, maybe to watch a video. Think of like that Amanda... um, hit video, the sizzle video, that's really, you know, that a lot of people are utilizing to send to people. So you're going to always invite people to that class or to watch that video. You're not just going to send it out to the masses. You're going to invite people um, and ask for their permission to send them that. You're going to do two follow-ups with prospects. Um, This isn't for me business. This is potential prospects, potential customers, and even I consider inactive customers because like for myself and many of us that have been in this business for a long time, I have a lot of inactive customers. So right now, my daily method of operation really focuses on reaching out to not only potential customers, but also an active customers and getting them excited about our new products and getting them re-engaged. Now, earlier I mentioned that I used to set the goal of doing this twice a day, but I, I've obviously edited my slide to be one time, one business conversation a day. And this is asking somebody to learn more. This is a three-way call. This is, I mean, I would even, you know, consider connecting with your own business builders in a mentor call type of setting, business conversations. The reason why I lessen this is because I'm really not good at this. I did not build this business with the business opportunity. I am not great at launching builders. Everybody's asking me, where do you find your builders? All these things. I am super awesome about customer, customer relationships, relationships in general, but business is not really my thing. It's something that I've had to really learn um, to lean into and to grow into. And it's still, I'm a huge work in progress in this area. So I've lessened this to one business conversation a day to take a little bit of pressure off myself. If you work your daily method of operation, it will work for you. And this is what I truly believe. Um, I have a little bit more to share, but I only have five more minutes. So I'd like to take a little bit of a pause. I'm going to stop my um, sharing my screen and my slide. And I gave some of you guys homework around this. Uh, and I would love to hear uh, from a few of you, how long did it take you to accomplish you know, this this list on this particular DMO and what were some of the successes and challenges that you encountered?
please don't make me call on people. <laughs> I don't want to have to do that. I'm hoping to get a volunteer or two. Yes, MLM Nation, Regina, thank you. Paula, three hours. Okay, so I'm imagining that you had a lot of engagement around it if it took that long. Would that be safe to say that you had people that were engaging with you that, that it took too long? Gina, you said about an hour usually. Who else does this already? Like I'm presenting this topic and I made a huge teacher mistake by not asking like who already does this every single day, takes these actions every single day. Let us know because you should be teaching this class. <laughs> awesome. Melanie, Tabitha. Tabitha, you mentioned that you did your, um, you did your homework. Would you mind unmuting and sharing? No, I don't mind. Um, so I do most of these things um, and every day. Um, I definitely try to contact at least two people I try to contact more than two people if possible, um, especially if, you know, I make two contacts and say maybe they don't answer the phone or I have to leave a voicemail. And so I will just kind of continue going until I speak to an actual person. Um, and, you know, sometimes I might make five calls and actually only get to talk to one person, but um, I try to get to two and, um, Creating a new names list was, I think, the more difficult thing for me. Um, I'm pretty brand new in the business. In fact, I've, I've only been, this will be my fifth month. Um, so I have worked my original names list pretty, um, uh, pretty, you know, as far as I can for the most part. Um, there are still some people on there that either, you know, I haven't contacted or um, or seemed like they were interested, but I couldn't get them to to, you know, agree to even receiving a sample. So I reapplied them to the new list. Um, anyone that I've reached out and either didn't end up getting a sample or, you know, got sampled and didn't get enrolled. I I've just been keeping them on my list. Um, and even some of the people that have been like, no, I, I don't want to do natural, you know, I'm not into essential oils or I've had some people be like, um, oh, I tried essential oils once and I got, you know, I got a bad rash from it. So now I'm never going to use essential oils again. And um, so I do try to be consistent. Some days it's a little harder than others. Um, you know, we have a toddler and sometimes she's a little bit of a handful so it definitely makes it hard she doesn't nap so it's not like i have any particular quiet time that i can say okay you know these are the two hours that i can work um i generally do try to do contacting i also actually do text blitzing um which seems like it has been pretty effective too um you know you just reach out you set yourself an amount of time to text as many people as you can and just ask them if they're open to receiving um, essential oil samples or, you know, if you've already sampled them, if they're open to coming to a class. Um, something that I've learned recently is to call it a workshop. Some people think they, they hear class and they kind of are like, oh, you know, I don't I don't really want to do a class. I got to bring pen and paper. So um, I've been calling it a an essential oil um, wellness workshop, and that does seem to get people a little a little bit more of their attention. And they're like, "Oh, a workshop? Okay, yeah, you know, I'm I'm okay with that." So we've been working on that. Um, and so yes, it took me to do everything on the list because the the names the new names list was a little bit more difficult than I anticipated. So it probably took me a couple of hours you know, to get like all of the other things done that weren't calls. Yes, yes, that totally makes sense. Thank you so much for sharing. You shared so many powerful nuggets. The whole idea of getting pushback and people that are saying no. And it's really hard, right, when it's people that we really love and are close to. But MetaPower is definitely a game changer. A lot of people are taking collagen already. So that's 
something. Kanani wrote the nap time hustle. I did the nap time hustle for years and the go to sleep hustle. So I know that that's a challenge if your toddler isn't um, napping, but definitely um, the consistency. And sorry to clarify, I just wanted to know how long it took to do like the two invites, the two. I know that the the names list and the memory jogger, that will be something um, that's a work in progress as well. So thank you, Tabitha, for, for sharing and congratulations, five months. And thank you've you already created some really awesome, consistent, disciplined habits. So, yes, I believe I have 17 founder points right now. So I'm excited. Awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank Paula, you. I see your hand is up. Did you want to share? Yeah, um, it did take three hours this particular time. Normally, when I went back and tracked, it's normally only about, honestly, it's less than two. But this time, um, I had a brand new leader with me and she kind of got to go through the journey with me. We met these people together. And not only do we have classes set up with them, but we have a brand new venue in a new town to do classes in that'll cost us zero dollars. And she's fired up because she was there with me. I'm super excited for her. And now she's like, oh my gosh, let's get going. This is amazing. And off of what Tabitha said, my names list that I created, the new names list, I did completely off of people who were no's before. And lo I'm looking at this list and the median tally number for these people is six and seven. So I'm hoping that these these knows I can get some out of there that are now yeses. That's so exciting. And, you know, I'm sure you guys have all heard, you know, Emily has said and corporate has said like they could have launched an entire new company with these businesses. So we have to really embrace that mindset that we have the opportunity. Like, yes, our oils are amazing, but let's be real. Not everybody is there. We can get them there later. But now we have these incredible po products with MetaPower that give us a different avenue to approach with some of our people that had previously said no. And then we can get them uh, loving the oils and loving other products. Um, as time goes on. All right. Thank you so much, Paula and Tabitha for sharing. I'm going to keep on keeping on because I'm over time. Um, so I just want to put this idea out there of, um, you know, you hear a ton about pipes. Tina Wong, Dr. Tina Wong started this whole series talking about pipes. And if you're ever feeling like your pipes are clogged or if they're not flowing, what I feel like is the one missing piece of pipes is this new contacts category. Networking is necessary. You have to keep expanding your network. Tabitha thought, talked already about how she kind of has exhausted like her warm market and now it was really a big task for her to go back and think about more people to put on these names lists so if you have any specific networking ideas please pop them in the chat these slides are super like I got them from someone else's presentation back in 2019 feel free to take some screenshots now a lot of these um rest on the idea that um you know in person kind of interaction which i think we're 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 getting more into so i know that for online um people um i'm not really i don't consider myself that i build online um there's a lot of other strategies to use right engaging on people's content posting content joining other facebook groups or other community groups liking commenting friending people and so forth so here are um a hundred different networking ideas <laughs> for you to lean into if you're feeling like your pipes are clogged or maybe they're stalled they're not even flowing because you don't have that 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 influx of new contacts and and, and people to to invite all right here are just some of my final thoughts as i wrap up for today um christina badal i had a really hard convention this year actually i'll tell a little personal story um i was supposed to walk as a founder this year i was at convention and life was happening back home and that day i just could not get up on stage so i actually missed my opportunity to celebrate walking as a founder 2.0 this year um i attended um uh, I attended, I got myself out of bed the next day and I went and I'm so glad I did because I got to hear Christina Bedell speak in person. And if you guys have not watched that session, her session from convention, it was everything. It was everything that I needed to hear. It was everything that I needed to connect with. And she talked 
um, a little bit, just very little about doTERRA and our core values and who we are. And so I just want to leave you with these final thoughts of always aligning ourselves with doTERRA and who we represent, who we are as not only um, stewards and advocates of the company and the products, but who we are as people. Um, I strive for these core values myself, and I am not perfect, but um, I'm so grateful to be aligned with a company um, that values transparency, that puts integrity and honesty and truth at the forefront of everything that they do. And, um, and so lean in to these core values um, as well as your why and your story and what keeps you going. But these are the things that right now in my business, I'm really connecting to and that keep me going. Some people build their businesses with sales and that's totally fine. I've built my business with people and people will always be what matters most to me. I'm so grateful to have shared space with you guys today. I think we are Ooh, six minutes over time, but if all of the founder 2.0 could put their hands up, I think it's time for a little bit of Q&A uh, before we wrap up the day. But thank you guys all for joining me today. Um, super grateful. All right. Anybody have any questions for any of the founders on the call? Roxanne, I think you're on the call. You need to put your hand up. I saw, I thought I saw you log in. Lucinda. No questions? Oh, there we go. Carol, go ahead. Carol. Uh, yes. Um, where do we get the best I guess, short list of how to speak about MetaPower with compliance. I'm, I'm going to be in front of two big health fairs in New Mexico here in the next two weeks. And I just want to be careful what I say. Where, where is that information? Um, founders, please feel free to unmute. I'm going to say real quick, um, the, D, the D, DMK has like PowerPoint, slideshows. I actually really like the frequently asked questions document. I think that document is chock full of really great compliant. But if you're doing an actual presentation, use the resources that um, corporate has has put out because that's going to be your best bet. Yeah. Thank you. Any, any other um, have anything to add to that? Carol. Oh. I have been attending Steve Scott's um, Meta Power teachings as well. And what I can actually do, um, if you want to add me um, or something, I can actually email you or Facebook message you um, the link for the PDF that he uses. Um, it's a handout and it's basically set up just like we would do an um, intro to oils class with the three cool things and the three ways to use. And it has um, a setup just like very similar to that. Um, and it's, it's super simple to teach the class that way without feeling um, overwhelmed or not knowing, you know, feeling that nervous, anxious feeling. So I can actually get that to you if you like. Okay, I just put my email in there um, okay. for you. I will mail that to you or email that to you then. Thank you very much. Oh, real welcome. quick, before anybody like logs off, Miley, um, who is presenting next week about aligned partnerships um, in the Founders 2.0 journey, her homework is there, um, is to complete a biz avatar worksheet. It's in the comments as well as the Zoom ID and password. So you might wanna go ahead and take a screenshot of that or copy and paste that and save that. Okay, sorry. Any other questions? Comments? I mean, we'll let you off five minutes early if that's what you want. Where, where I'm sorry, where is the thing for next week? I, I didn't see it. It's in the chat. If you, you could probably have to scroll up a little bit. Okay. So Eliza, yeah. you mentioned some hard things happening in life right now. Oh. <laughs> what are some things that are your go-tos that get you up and going on those hard days? Oh, in terms of product? Or like, uh, like, don't, like okay, on a hard day, it's hard to do those things. Like what are, oh. what do you lean into? You know, you, you, you're talking about the action, the action. Yes. 
yeah, like, you know, sometimes it's just good to have an action backup plan or whatever. I was just curious if there's either in verse or podcast or what do you like to do to get you back on your feet? Um, so I, I talked about being super honest. I am the leader that has no morning routine. I struggle so hard with that. I'm the leader that loves McDonald's French fries and I struggle with healthy eating. I'm the leader that like I, so I'm laughing about this because I wouldn't say that I have any one thing that I go to. I do really love podcasts. Um, I do really love podcasts, but again, I like flip and flop between all of these. I think I do lean into my product a lot and adaptive and balance. And when I don't take my LLV um, consistently, I notice that I feel things. I mean, I feel things heavy already. So it's like a next level. Um, But I also lean into spending time with my family. Oh, and the ocean. I jump into the ocean. That's that's for sure. So that was hard in Utah because, you know, they don't have one of those. So, but I will say this, I'm not disciplined about a lot of things in my life, straight up. But one thing I think that I've developed over time is the discipline around these daily habits with contacting and following up because I do them every single day. And they're easy to do. You don't always have to get on the phone with people and be face to face, but I can still send a message or a text to somebody even when when I'm in that hard stuff. So I don't think that helped you, Lydia, but yeah. All right. Thank um, you. No, that was really good. And I like how you said there was, there's no just one thing. And I think that's so real. Like, no, that went flopping back and forth. One thing works sometime and the next time it's the next thing. So that was, thank you. Yeah. And sometimes it's my kids and spending time with them. And sometimes it's like, okay, I need you guys to actually leave me alone and go away. I mean, you know, not just for like a little bit, not forever, but like, you know, so I think we have to give ourselves so much grace in this journey, but also be really realistic um, about what we are doing, what the action is that we're taking. There are, everybody wants this, you guys, everybody wants this. They want the, the, the ranks, they want the residual income. They want the founders club opportunity and the title and the whatever, but like, getting there is a lot of work and Emily is right the self-discipline is real and if you don't develop at least some positive habits around that thank goodness I have it's you know it's it's gonna be hard so coming to these calls are great it's amazing you've connected maybe you feel inspired maybe you don't but what do you do after you get off that's what matters it's what matters now and, you know, always in this business. So, um, yes, Janelle, one thing I am is transparent, good, bad, or otherwise. Jen said, I have a question about instilling belief. I know nobody has a crystal ball, but from what you see and what you know, if you're on this call and we don't even have 100 points, are we still in this? absolutely. freaking lutely <laughs> Here's some honesty for you. Doterra never anticipated that it would take this long for people to close out founders. They would have never set this thing up like this, I think, if they thought it would have taken so long. It is insane to imagine that there are still this many spots left in founders. Absolutely. Now, if you're at 100 points, it's going to ask you to build in a different way than I built. And it's going to ask you to go a lot faster. You know that DMO I did? You're going to have to do DMO on steroids, on fire. You should be doing 20 people a day. You should be doing five classes a week if you're at 100 points and you want founders. But are you still in it? Heck yeah, you're still in it. All right. It is, yes, Lucinda, you are all in but run and run fast for sure. It's 945, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. I think those of us that are founders are going to stay on the call and chat a little bit more. But as always, I am always honored to share space with anyone who is out there sharing what we have to offer the world because we are all one big doTERRA family and we are all in this together, supporting, loving, cheering each other on. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks so much. Bye.